Hello essay writers! We're getting back to our personal narratives this week, so let's review our five paragraph essay format. You will introduce your topic, introduce your story. Your personal narrative is a personal story, so the first thing you need to do is give us a little bit of an introduction. You will also provide details so that we know what happened, what it was all about, and then you will have a conclusion. And when you conclude in a personal narrative, remember, it's essentially a reflection. You're letting us know what you learned, what was important about this story, what is the significance. So, one paragraph usually for the introduction, three paragraphs to give the details of the story, and a final paragraph, the fifth paragraph, to conclude, to reflect and tell us what the importance was, what you learned, what you got out of it. So, the thing about a personal narrative is that it is a story. So, it also follows a traditional story arc that we might apply to fiction. So I thought I would talk a little bit this week about something called Freytag's Pyramid. Gustav Freytag was a German novelist in the 19th century, and he developed this way of analyzing tragedies. He was looking at drama, particularly at the tragedy, and he noticed similar patterns as he watched and read plays and he developed this pyramid which we now have adapted and we use it to analyze fiction all kinds of fiction but his basic pyramid went like this and these might be very familiar terms for you at the start you have exposition and exposition is simply telling it's where you set up the story Right around here, you have something that is an inciting incident. Something happens that introduces conflict or a problem into the story. From there, things begin to build. As they build, it's called rising action. And you can probably guess the high point of the story is called the climax. After the climax, ooh, if this is rising action over here, what do you think we have? We have falling action, which brings us to the resolution, and ultimately the denouement, which is a fantastic word. It translates from French to mean literally untying the knot. So that's how um, Freytag saw drama working. And you can see this in a, in a typical five act play. Act one is exposition, act two is rising action. Somewhere toward the end of act three, you hit your climax. Act four, you have a bit of falling action. And act five is resolution, denouement. And uh, that's pretty typical. Now we, of course, have adapted this today. Sometimes we look at it as a story arc with all of these parts on it. Exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, resolution, denouement. Sometimes we say it's more like an upside down check mark because really after the climax, there's not usually a lot of story left. And if you look at plays, Act 1 and 2 and 3 are usually a lot longer than Act 4 and 5 because you don't have so much to happen after the climax. Um, and, you know, a story might even have a shape where it, where it uh, begins to build, plateaus a bit, begins to build again, plateaus a bit, get a bit, begins to build again to the final climax, and then you have your resolution. So stories can have lots of different shapes, and your personal narrative is going to have somewhat of this shape also. You're going to give us the introduction, the basic background, 
There will be rising action as you describe what was happening in your story. You reach the climax of the story and then you give us a little bit of a wrap up and your conclusion, why it was important, what was significant. So um, you can consider that as you are writing your narrative that you are building a story. And this week, you'll be working on a second draft of your narrative. Now, um, some people got a full essay in, some people got a beginning of an essay. Uh, wherever you are, what you're going to do is now revisit that personal narrative and try to get all five paragraphs done. When it is time to write. I know it can be it can be really difficult to find that time to sit down and do the work. Um, I don't know if anyone out there is a runner, but it's a lot like that. You might say, oh, I should run. Well, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. And then it's dark and it's not good for running anymore. And the next day you think, I'll run. And you don't go. And uh, a lot of times it's because we don't really enjoy the running. We really like having run. And people say that about writing also. I think it was Dorothy Parker said, I hate writing, but I love having written. And um, James Michener, who wrote Gone with the Wind, he said, I'm a horrible writer, but I'm an excellent rewriter. So you're not alone in thinking that sitting down to put those first words on the paper is an intimidating and horrible and anxiety producing um, task. But you've got to make the time. My suggestion to you this week, if you're having a little trouble getting yourself going on this, is to give yourself short assignments. Remember it is a five paragraph essay, so that means you can break it into five parts and give yourself a short amount of time. Uh, setting a timer is nice because it lets you know that you're going to devote a certain amount of time and then you're free, you're done. You've done what you planned to do and you can let yourself off the hook. So short assignments is a good strategy. Take it one paragraph at a time. Commit to getting one paragraph done each day and then you'll even have uh, two days to look it over and make improvements if you want to or shift things around. One paragraph at a time. Maybe you want to sit down and write in 20 minute increments. That's not a lot of time. Set a timer for 20 minutes, sit down, commit to that 20 minutes, then let yourself off the hook. Maybe do this twice in one day. Maybe do 20 minutes every day until you're done. Whatever it takes um, and get that essay in. If you finish a first draft early in the week and you want to send it to me for some feedback, I will happily take a look at it and get it back to you. And um, that should be helpful also. Okay, so short assignments. And then the other thing that really helps in any kind of writing is when you are working on a piece of writing, it's nice to read the kind of writing you're trying to produce. To that end, I have put in, I separated out folders. So now instead of sample essays, we have sample personal narratives. And I have added three new personal narratives in there for you to look at. You will find that uh, one of them at least is very simple. It might not even be five paragraphs, it might be four but it is labeled and I often find that looking at a really simple version of something I'm trying to learn to do is a great way to get the basic structure into my head. So there are three new documents in this folder and then also in the folder organizing your essay there are a couple of new personal narrative planners uh, one of them is called that, Personal Narrative Planner. The other one is, oh, <laughs> I love this other one. It's a, it's a photograph, and I think I titled it Personal Narrative, and then I wrote, what a great way to organize. 
I love what this person has done. Um, <clears throat> this person created Freytag's pyramid on their wall with electrical tape, and they did it like this, which is probably a more accurate representation of how a story works, because remember we said after the climax, there's not always a lot. There's not equal time on the other end. So uh, they have created their pyramid on the wall and then used post-it notes to put, you know, what's going to happen at various points. And I love that. I just love the physical representation and the fact that you can take a post-it note and say, oh, I, you know, I was going to explain this at the end, but you know what? I think I'd like to start with that one. It brings us back to what I have said before about essays being like Lego blocks, all the different paragraphs. You, you build your paragraphs with all of these sentences that can be rearranged until they work perfectly. And then you build your essay out of all the paragraphs that can be rearranged until they work perfectly. It's very mathematical in that way. So, I love this one. You have to look at this. And um, that's your assignment for next week second draft of the personal narrative and take a look at these things to help yourself out and please feel free to email me or post something on the Edmodo site and I'll get back to you right away with information and um, I'm looking forward to reading your persuasive essays and now you get a break from those for a week and then we'll get back to those next week. So good luck with your personal narratives and I'll talk with you soon. Happy writing!